Talk all the time. You never let me get in a word. I wish I had, I had a dime for every thought I've swallowed unheard. No matter what it is that I do, it's like I just can't see it get through. I got so much to say. If only you would listen. I've tried every which way. How about another round of applause for them? Are they amazing or what? Right? <laughs> amazing. Awesome. So before we get into questions, first of all, thank you all for being here. You guys are amazing. I had a chance to see the show on Monday and was totally blown away. Um, but before we get into questions, I would love it if you could all introduce yourselves. Maybe say your name and then what part you play in the show. And maybe for the kids, you can say how old you are. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hi, my name is Gabrielle Green. I play Chanel in the show, and I also understudy Tamika, and I'm 12 years old. Hi, I'm Rachel Kasky. I play Katie the bassist, and I'm also 12 years old. Hi, I'm Levi Booksbaz, and I play Freddie the drummer, and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm Connor Galuli. I'm uh, the matinee Dewey, and uh, I'm 24. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Zachary Swelling. I play Zach the guitarist, and I am 11 years old. Hi, I'm Olivia Chen. I play Summer the band manager, and I'm 10 years old. Hi, my name is John Allen, and I play Billy the stylist, and I'm 10 years old. Hi, I'm Amadi Chapada. I'm 11 years old, and I play Tamika the singer. Awesome. So, first question for you guys. So this is obviously, the show is based upon the movie, which came out in 2003. It was a, a pretty major hit. I actually learned that it was the best-selling uh, best musical comedy until Pitch Perfect 2 came out, which is pretty awesome. So quick question for the kids. Were any of you actually born by the time the movie came out? Uh, um, well, the movie came out in 2004, so I was born a year after. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so I was two have, years late. <laughs> a few who were close. But the, the serious question is, so obviously it's a very well-known uh, movie. A lot of people know it. Um, how much did you guys, when you were getting ready for the show, how much work did you watch the movie? How much did that influence your characters? Or did you mostly learn the characters through the process of rehearsal? Um, so um, me, like... We didn't really base our characters off the movie. Yeah, the movie was part of our influence because it's the movie School of Rock. But uh, our characters are kind of like they're really different. Like, so I didn't really look up to the to the Zach in the movie. But we we yeah, our characters are different. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I never, I don't think I actually watched the movie. I watched it, like, a little bit. But, um, but when I auditioned, um, I just, we did, I did, like, an open call. So I was auditioning for anybody. Cool. Um, well, I mean, in my real life, I'm kind of like Billy, because I'm always very sassy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kind of base. Billy off of me, not off of the movie, so. All right, how about you, Connor? Because I know, so particularly, obviously, Jack Black, he's not somebody who's known for being unoriginal. Um, <laughs> he's definitely a strong character. How much pressure did you feel coming into the role that, you know, people are coming in expecting to see Jack Black, and how do you navigate that line between being original but also staying true to an iconic character. Yeah, uh, good question. I, uh, I like I grew up watching the movie, and I was I've always been really influenced by Jack Black and his energy and his passion. And I was I was a worshiper of Tenacious D. Maybe when I was too young, but uh, I I when I went into the audition, I knew that nobody does Jack Black the way Jack Black does Jack Black. So I, I wasn't gonna go in there and do an impression, and I was I was just like I gotta do it my way. Um, cause I figured like I've been watching him for so long that, you know, the rocket sauce would, would shine through on its own, I think. Um, so I really, uh, and they, they seem to enjoy that. So, uh, all of the Deweys, they all were encouraged to put their own fingerprint on it and really make it their own. Cause, uh, you know, you go in and expect to see Jack Black, but it, it's, it's, there's no substance to it if you're doing just an impression, you know? So it's got to come from a real place of excitement and, and like energy, uh, and uh, they really bring that out in me. And uh, it, it's just, uh, yeah, it, there, there's no use in doing an impression, but because uh, because you just do it your way, and uh, and I, I think it uh, they seem to enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. So you actually made a, bring up a really interesting point that you are actually one of uh, two Deweys in the course of a week. Yeah. So do you feel? And it sounds like you don't feel like you need to portray the same way as the other Dewey. How about for you guys? Is it really different working with the different Deweys? Do they do things differently every time? And what, what's that like? Oh, she can go first. <laughs> <clears throat> well, for me, I feel like it's really fun being able to have three Deweys and go on because I feel like doing like the same show with like the same Dewey's kind of boring. So I love to have, see like different like personalities go on stage and I love performing with Connor and Justin and everybody. It's really fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I feel like all the Deweys, they have different kind of aspects that make them their own. For example, Connor, he's so good at physical humor. Like, throughout the show, he's so good at it. And then Justin, like, say something that went wrong, he, like, his improv is literally, like, right on point. Like, no hesitation at all. So I really like how Dewey brings out these two in such a special way, and they're both so talented. So you mentioned improv. So I guess... I, I would imagine the show changes a lot day to day, especially, I mean, obviously there's a lot of set, funny, written lines, but have you guys ever had things happen over the course of the show that are either something that Dewey did or something one of the kids did that's just uh, hilarious? Maybe you, Levi. Uh, so I think Wednesday, um, uh, the Miss Mullins missed her entrance into the classroom so Justin just started making up a bunch of things, and he just started rambling for like four minutes, and it was super funny. Right, it was like it was it was when uh, Mullins was coming in, and yeah. uh, he had to cover up and be like, "And lo, the wooden tooth, salty hair, George Jefferson Washington crossed the Delaware." And, create, and, she, and, and he created just kept the going. light bulb. And yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he did this, and he did this, and please come out, and he did this. <laughs> yeah. And what's that like for you guys when you're on stage, right? Because you are obviously waiting for the your lines to come up or the next thing to happen when somebody has to vamp like that for a couple minutes. Yeah, maybe you, uh, uh, John. Um, well, I am next to Marcy and Sophie, one of the roadies, and Marcy, the backup singer. And we were looking at each other like, what's going on? And, we could, and I could hear the two people around me. We were like laughing with air. It was like <laughs> the whole time. And then when she finally came in, all of us were like, Olivia? Um, I think it's really cool because after, like, even if, like, this is not good for, like, any of the prop or the crew, but, like, anytime something, like, a little different happens on stage, after we come off stage, so Rachel and I share a dressing room, and we're always talking, like, oh, that made our adrenaline go up and stuff like that, yeah. so. Cool. Oh, yeah, Gabby. I think it's, like, a daily reminder that you always have to stay in character and be on edge. Like, you can't get comfortable. You have to stay on edge and be in character and be ready when things happen like that. Totally. So one of the things, just to, to pivot a little bit, one of the things I think everybody finds really interesting, especially a show with a, a lot of kids, right, is what it's like for you guys to, to do this day in and day out. And so one of the things I, I was reading is that a lot of you guys actually aren't from New York or not even from the, the New York area. I think I saw West Coast. I, I saw people from the South. So a question, how, how on earth did the producers discover you? Amadi? One word, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, so <laughs> <laughs> well, um, basically, my mom, uh, one of her friends said, uh, saw it on Facebook, and she was like, hey, well, um, there's auditions for School of Rock, uh, 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 it's for um, Tamika, thank you, and she has to be like 10 to uh 12, I think, that's what they said. And I, I did a video audition, and I sent it to them, and I got a call back. I did another song, and then they asked me to come to New York. And I'm from Atlanta, so it was just like in one week, and then they told me I got the part, so I had to hurry up, move like in a week, and then start rehearsals the next day. So did you move, and this is, I guess, for all of you too, you might have similar experiences. Did your whole family move up? Did you move up um, by yourself? Just was my mom, but we didn't know if we were going to stay or not for another year, but I am, and now my brothers moved with us. Cool. Yeah. Zach? And then, uh, so I moved from Santa Monica, L.A., and we basically just sent in a video because we're like, it's worth a shot. It's. Did you see this on Facebook as well? Is that what? No, I, um, I went to, uh, like... A music program in LA, um, the school, a school of rock, West LA actually. So it's like a school of rock learning program, teach kids how to play instruments. And the head of school of rock was walking around one day, and I had a guitar lesson. And he came to me. He's like, "Oh, um, you're Zach. You should audition for Zach." So I'm just like, <laughs> "Okay." Like, at first, I'm like, "No, maybe not. I don't. I don't know." But then a little while later, he reminded me. I'm like, "Why not?" But so I sent in a video. And then six months later, I got a call back and said, come to New York. And it all went off from there. <laughs> and did your, uh, did your whole family move out from the West Coast as well? Yeah, my whole family moved out. They're very supportive. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. 
Yeah, Gabby. Well, I'm not too far from here. I'm from Philadelphia, but we still had to move here. And like Amadi said, like we got a week notice. We had to move here and start rehearsals the next day. But open calls are just lifesavers. Like you just go in there, put your talent out there, even if they don't select you for that, then you know that they have your talent information and they can just contact you for any part. So that's kind of my thing. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna do it. I might not get it because my mindset was I might not get the first 100 auditions, but eventually I'll get something. Then if a few months, I, they, I got a call back. I was like, oh, okay. And then I went there, did the other call back, and then they uh, called me saying that they um, want me to do the parts. So I was like, yay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just sent in a video. And wait, where um, are you from, Levi? I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. So I just like sent in a video. I'm like, I'm not going to get it. It's like winning the lottery. Basically impossible. <laughs> so, uh, and then I think a couple weeks later, I got a call back. I'm like, Wait, you're telling me I got a callback? <laughs> and then I just kept getting callbacks, and then they asked me to go to New York. I'm like, all right. And then after that, I got the job, and they said, you have a week to move up here, and you start the day after. <laughs> wow. Well, and because obviously this is sort of a different audition probably than a traditional musical theater, because for a lot of you, you are playing the instruments live on stage. And for those of you who haven't seen, seen the show, these guys are basically professional level musicians. It is um, amazing. They're this insane. is not like a kid's band. This is like a band <laughs> yeah. band. So what was the audition process like for those of you who played instruments? Yeah. Um, so I play the bass. So I first sent in a video of me playing Teacher's Pet, which is one of the songs on the bass. And then they called me in for an audition. And then it just escalated from there. And then I got the job. <laughs> And, and by the way, so um, again, for those of you who haven't seen the show, you probably have the best rock face of anybody in the entire show. Can you, can you, would you mind showing the face you make when you play the bass? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, pretty Ooh. badass. <laughs> so how about for the rest of you that played instruments, like when you, uh, like Levi, because you play the drums, so you, yeah. you had to come in and basically show them your stuff. Did you have like a preset routine or they had something that you wanted, they wanted you to play when you showed up? Uh, yeah, so they wanted me to play Teacher's Pet and then after that they asked me to play a song that I prepared, but I didn't know that. So I just basically just like, oh, well I can play this song so I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> Okay. It was, yeah. Cool. It's kind of intimidating though with all those other drummers. I'm like, oh. I'm sure. <laughs> well, and so when when you when you guys got here, so this is a, a pretty intense show. There's what eight yeah. eight shows a week for you guys. Yeah. How do how, how does that work with going to school? Do you go to? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen so many people excited to talk about school. This is amazing. Um, we'll start with you, Amadi, then we can work down. Um, well, I um, have a online school, and basically I get my subjects, they send me my, sub my, my teachers, and I can call them anytime, so I always have help. And um, I have five lessons, and then I do them, I have to do like maybe five hours a day or six hours a day, and 27, 25 hours a week, but I get my lessons from online, and I do them, I submit them, and then I'm done for the day. Also, I get to be in my pajamas, and that's amazing. This is, this is all through Google Classroom, right? Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go down the line. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I go to public school every single day, um, but when I first started, when school started, I went to this tutoring program on Wednesdays because we have a matinee. But because it was easier just to go to school and have the teacher explain the lessons to you, I go to school every single day, but it's kind of annoying having to wake up at 7.30 after doing a show. It's, it's hard, but it's fun. Olivia? Uh, so this is my third year doing this. I was in The King and I before. And so I started at the age of eight. And so for now, I'm doing public school. Um, over the summer, we tried doing homeschooling. It was a little more difficult because my mom's like not a natural teacher and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I go to public school. And it's, it's definitely tiring, especially having to wake up early in the morning after a show. But it's also, we're getting something good out of it because we're getting to do what we love. Um, yeah, I completely agree with Olivia. 
it's it's totally all worth it when you get to do something that you love. And I go to a public school in Tribeca, and it's in a, waking up in the morning, although it's hard, and um, I feel bad for my mom trying to get to wake have to wake me up every morning uh, <laughs> um, after doing a show the the night before. It's very tiring, but it's something that I love, so it's completely worth it. I don't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm homeschooled, but I personally don't like it since you don't have like other kids there. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I get like a mix of homeschooling and tutoring, so like a little bit of both. It's it's fair. So my mom, well, when she was back in Philadelphia, she used to be a principal. So she's like, you're doing school. She's like, no excuses, you're doing school. So I just do online school. But she's there to help me whenever I need it. My online school is like not a public school that's like sending me homework. It's basically just online. So it's really helpful that I have online teachers that are just there whenever I need them. Cool. And what do your friends think about the fact that like, or your classmates think about that you're on Broadway? <laughs> uh, Zach? Um, well, I, I kind of like <laughs> something that I've went by my whole life is just always be humble. So I don't really talk about it much at school. I go to school and then I go to the show every day pretty much. Um, some of my classmates like on the first day of school because um, I moved to New York. So I was the new kid. And um, the f on the first day of school, some kids told me like, you're a liar, you're a liar. I'm like, OK. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vadi? Well, since my friends are in Atlanta, so like I can't see them every day, which is really sad, but I always talk to them. And um, just like Zach said, I'm always humble. I don't really talk about it a lot because I don't really want to make anyone feel bad or anything. And I miss them a lot, but they're really supportive. When I left, I had a party and it was really fun. That's awesome. Olivia? Uh, so, because I've been doing this three years, as I said before, um, a lot of my friends are really supportive, and a ton of them have come to see the show, and they really enjoyed it, but a lot of, like, other kids are not my class, they're sometimes like, oh, like, exact friends, they're like, oh, you're not actually on Broadway, I'm like, okay, whatever. And Connor, I know, obviously, you're, you're not a kid, so your classmates are probably <laughs> not saying a lot, but you, this, you were talking a little bit earlier before, and this is actually your Broadway debut, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk about a little bit about your journey to yeah. getting here? It's, uh, it's crazy, man. I, I graduated in 2016, and uh, I, I got an agent through a showcase, and uh, I was plan I, I mostly did film work up, in, up until, I mean, I did, you know, musicals and stuff like that, and... Uh, but I, I thought I was just gonna pack all my stuff up and move to LA, but then I, I got this agent, and so I moved to New York, and I've been living in a closet, and I just got out. D that sounded weird. Um, <laughs> uh, um, so I, I went on auditions, uh, I did some stand-up, uh, and then I auditioned for the tour, and uh, like did a callback that same day, and then auditioned for Andrew Lloyd Webber, and then uh, I got a call that said I didn't get the tour, I got, I got Bridway. So, uh, uh, so since the 5th of July, life has been a whirlwind. It's just, it's been madness. I, I went from like nannying to make money, just barely making rent, and then, and then this happened. And I started like you guys, it was the next day. And That's was, amazing. And yeah. like, like the kids, so in the show, obviously, you're, you shred on the guitar. Like it is not a joke what, what you have to do on the guitar. I'm, Were you already a guitar player I'm coming lucky into the enough, role? Oh, I'm lucky enough to play with them on stage, but I really, I knew, I played like acoustic, I played chords, um, so the company was kind enough to give me lessons and work on my solo game, um, which has been amazing, because it's like, it's like learning another language, and I'm just learning, you know, I would like to order the chicken, you know, just like a little, I got like a little solo in it, so, um, they really took time to work on the stuff that I'm playing live, um, and uh, and we just really honed in on that, uh, just so it's good for the stage. But now I'm, you know, sort of spreading out and expanding my skill set. But I didn't know. I, I really I thought I knew about guitar, and then I got this job, and I, like I, just the musicians there, them and the house band, they're incredible and so helpful, and they just they've been so great teaching me and I, I they you, like they're teaching me more than anything <laughs> yeah really <laughs> well you would never know I mean you you look like a pro up there for oh, sure <laughs> so actually speaking of that do all of you guys since you're all uh, musicians 
are you active? Are they? Do you do any form of lessons throughout the course of the show to like keep the skills up, or just playing every day sort of makes it happen? Lauren. Oh me. Um. So I like I take. I can't, we don't have, like, time for tons of lessons. So, like, every once in a while, I'll take a bass lesson and then, like, um, voice and dance. So, like, I don't have that much time for it, but we, like, try to fit it in as much as we can. Okay. Uh, Zach? Um, for me, uh, at the very beginning when I started, I think the company provided three <laughs> lessons to learn the entire material. Um, and so I took those three lessons, and then I went on stage and did did this and then um and then for the next month I wasn't taking lessons and I'm like and then I decided like you can never like you never stop learning so I need to get back in lessons so now I'm taking lessons once a week with a teacher yeah Amadi well I don't play an actual instrument in the show well like I do but I don't I play um my voice and um which is I, absolutely amazing by the way Totally blows Thank you away. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, it's if you uh, do lessons over the course well, of the show. I honestly, I'm so tired. I feel like I need to rest. I don't really have like the time or like the energy to take lessons. But my mom, she was, she's an actress and a singer, so I practically get my lessons from her at home. So that's really easy. And uh, yeah. Olivia? Um, so I don't play an instrument in the show also. I could say I play the triangle in the show, but that's about it. And, um, but I, on every Thursday, which is my day off, um, I take piano lessons, and I've been doing that since I was really little, so I do that. But then also, like, I play, like, the ukulele and, like, a little bit of guitar. So I just, like, practice at home just for fun. It's nothing professional like these people. Cool. Real quick, I just want to say we definitely want to open it up for Googlers to ask any questions if you have any. So if you have any questions, um, just make your way to the mics on either side. Um, and then if anybody's up there, I will make sure that we get to answer them. Um, so while we're waiting to see if anybody wants to ask any questions, I definitely have more. Um, one is, so this is a show all about rock, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys diehard rock fans? <laughs> okay, Zach, your hand shot up. Yes. Okay, so I came into this show like, like I'm like now I consider myself an actor and like and a dancer and like all of this, but uh, I came into the show like for the music. I came into the show like, oh gosh, I get to play my guitar eight times a week in front of 1,600 people a night. It's pretty cool. So that was like that was like I just the guitar and I sing. And, but, and my favorite band's Led Zeppelin, so, like, I, I look up to Led Zeppelin, I look up to Jimmy Page, pretty much, it, like, he's just amazing, he's, he's fantastic, I can play a lot of Zeppelin songs, and so I, but now, like, the show has really taught me a lot, it's taught me about um, dancing, acting, and I've learned a ton, yeah. And what's your favorite uh, song to shred on the guitar? Oh, um, any Led Zeppelin song. <laughs> Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> You've trained them well. Yeah. <laughs> Amadi? Um, um, well, I, was, I didn't really know any bands or anything until like I met these people, um, especially the old cast that would talk about it all the time, this cast, talk about it all the time. But right now, I love Guns N' Roses. That's one of my favorites. And my favorite song is Paradise City, one of my favorites. <laughs> Cool. I'm actually going to open it up real quick. We had a question over here. Yeah, hi. Um, I was curious at what age you started playing instruments or singing. But maybe, maybe we can go quickly down the line because that would be really interesting to know. So I basically started singing at seven, but since then, like one personality thing about me is that once I'm into something, it's like I'm into it, I'm doing this, like this is what I want to do. So just over time and over time, I just started perfecting my voice, and then this is I, what, I decided this is what I want to do. So. Um, I started like professionally doing theater when I was seven, going on eight, and then I started learning bass like about two years ago, and I learned it for the show. I started playing drums when I was about five. So yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't start doing anything till like the seventh grade, and there was like a community theater I went to, and then I just started doing every single musical. The first musical I ever did was uh, West Side Story, and I was a shark. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's uh, <laughs> I started playing guitar when I was seven, and then I, I totally agree with Gabby that once you find something that you love, it's not even like it just you just gotta keep doing it and enjoying it. Um, I started playing like the piano when I was I think like five, and but professionally um, singing and acting and dancing, I started when I was eight, and then uh, also singing and dancing um, non professionally, I started when I was like five or six. Um, I started doing this professionally when I was seven because I was also in an, another show called Peter Pan Live, um, which was really fun, but this was the big step for me. Peter Pan was just a small little step, but this was the bigger step. In front of millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> a little thing called Peter Pan Live. <clears throat> well, I have been doing what I've been doing literally all my life. Literally, because my mom, like I said, she's an actress, singer, so I followed her like a duck, and like, so I get everything from her, like the acting, the singing, and also my dad, he's a musician, so I play a little bit of ukulele and a little bit of guitar. Cool. Laura? Um, hi, guys. You are all so poised and polished at such young ages. I'm so impressed. Does anybody get stage fright? And if so, how do you overcome it? Yeah, Gabby? Okay, so like, you know that like saying, like picture everybody in underwear? Well, <laughs> I picture everyone like in pajamas or Halloween <laughs> costumes, so that kind of makes me laugh, like, you know, so. Olivia? So on, on my opening night for the show, I was um, performing with Rachel over there. And we, she, we were both like really nervous, and we both were squeezing each other's hands, and we did like a shake off. It was really fun. Uh, Zach. Um, so I like I don't get real, I don't get stage fright, um, but it, I do get nervous sometimes. Um, I get nervous more for the small crowds than the the Broadway, because um, when you do something so much, and you don't tend to get nervous that much. Um, um, for like the Broadway also on my opening night it's hard to be ner nervous like when you have so many amazing castmates just cheering you on telling you you're it's you're awesome it's gonna be great so John yeah. um well I joined the cast with Zach Gabby and Levi and before I went on stage I enter with Levi and we were both really nervous like what Olivia said we were squeezing each other's hands taking deep breaths in and out and then when we opened the doors, we were, I was shocked that I was actually living my dream on Broadway. Cool. I'd love to get to more of you, but we're going to take another one from the crowd real quick. Hey, guys. So I'm just curious, between school and performing, do you actually have time for extracurriculars, hanging out with friends? And if you do, what do you like to do? Uh, Rachel? Um, so in terms of hanging out with, like, school friends, I actually don't have that much time, like, Actually, last night, my friend, like, wrote to me, like, hey, can we have a sleepover, like, tomorrow night, which is, like, today? And I'm like, no, sorry, I can't because I have a show tonight. And then for, like, extracurricular, I have, like, since I'm homeschooled, I have more time. Um, so, yeah, I have, like, uh, like an, uh, like lesson every week or something. Amadi? Well, um, we do have days off. Like on Wednesday, we have the rest. Uh, we have one matinee. And then Thursday, whole day off. Then today, we have a show tonight. But I um, love to hang out with different friends. Like I, um, a friend that actually just left the cast. Sadly, her name is Ruthie, and she played Marcy. We had like sleepovers and had a lot of fun. We went out to eat, but we don't do too much because we, of course, have to get rest because eight shows a week's pretty intense. Olivia? Um, so after school, on Mondays I have a club, on Tuesdays I have a club, and then on Fridays I have a club. So this year, um, my parents have tried to get me more into like school, like being like a normal child. <laughs> Instead of just doing this, even though I love doing it, I just get to hang out with my friends after, so I do different clubs, yeah. Yeah, John? Um, so I don't really see my best, best friends until Thursday or day off, but I still get to see my really good friends at school. 
Um, but what I do on my day off is that I go to my country club with all my friends, and we try to have as much time as we can together because we never get to see each other. Cool. I'm going to switch your questions. But um, so for some of you, I know we have uh, Olivia, at least you've been in another show on Broadway. For I think for everybody else, this is their first show on Broadway. Is that yeah. right? Yes. So now that you've done this, is this what you see yourself doing for the rest of your life? Or is this like you're, you're just happy to have done this and want to go do something else? Yeah. Gabby. Oh, yeah. I'm a total theater geek. Like, as soon as I moved here, I'm like, whoa. Like, I started looking up some old shows, listening to music, just kind of getting out there just in case, like, revivals and stuff. There's, like, a lot of revivals that's been happening recently. So I just look up some songs, like Cabaret. I've been obsessed with Cabaret. Hamilton, of course. So. <laughs> Cool. Lauren? Rachel. Oh, Rachel, sorry. <laughs> um, as a kid, like, I definitely love doing this, and I'm going to keep doing it like as much as I want to. But when I'm an adult, I'm, gonna, I'm a huge fan of animals, so I'm gonna be, I want to be a veterinarian. Cool. Levi? So after this, I kind of just want to stick with my drumming and get like, so much better at it. Like, you know, like try and be Neil Peart. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Well, let's just go down the rest of the line, then we'll take another question from another Googler. You want to? Yeah. Me? Uh, I'm, this is just a stepping stone to get to my real passion, which is quilting. No, I don't, uh, this is cool. I'll stay here. <laughs> um, so I agree with Levi. Um, it's, the thing is, I never thought I would be on Broadway. Like, it just, it's all so, un the future is just so, um, just unpredictable, and you can, I can't, I don't never, ever, ever want to say that I'm going to do this. Like, I want to, like, because I want to be able to, like, I want to have options. I want to do as many things as I want, and after this, if there's a, a Broadway show that I really want to do, try out for, um, then I'll try out for it, but um, I really, I aspire to be like Jimmy Page, so I, I'm, I like the guitar playing, yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I really love doing this, but also I want to be a doctor when I grow up, so I think I mean, you, if I get another, if I do something after this, then like maybe I'll do it, but it's going to be harder because I'm in middle school the next year, but I also later on, maybe after like middle school, I just want to <laughs> I want to kind of be a normal child and for a little bit and then uh, move on. Um, I definitely want to stay with this for the rest of my life, but after Peter Pan, I needed a long break to have time with my friends, and I feel the same after this. But if this doesn't work out for me, I also have another thing I want to do, and that would be professional swimming. Cool. Well... Um, I definitely want to do this. Like I said, I've been doing it all my life, and I really want to stay up to this. I'm going, I will do anything that the Lord takes me to and where the path goes, um, Broadway, TV, anything. Awesome. We have one more question. Yeah, I have another question. I'm back. Um, you guys are so cool. Um, I imagine being on Broadway, you get to meet other really cool people. Have you ever gotten to meet? <laughs> Nobody. Nope. All right, here's what we'll do. We'll go, we'll go down the line. Best star sighting since you started. We'll start here and we'll go down. Tyler Haynes from Cats at Starbucks. Bruno Mars and Ben Platt. Ooh. Um, Christian Borrell on his way to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I met Reed Bernie. He's a really nice guy. Mm. Yeah. Um, Probably Michael Rucker that plays Yondu in Guardians of the Galaxy came to see the show. Um, I would say Michelle Obama. Um, I, w I was in King and I, and she came for one of the Kings last day. And also Ben Platt and Bruno Mars. Um, Christian Borle, Kelly O'Hara, Christopher Walken, Allison Williams, and Ben Platt. Who? Ben Platt. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, um, for it was my opening night actually, and I got to meet Bruno Mars. I got to hug him. He gave me a handshake, and he told me that I did awesome. And it, I am, I'm very sad. I had to wash my hand, but it's okay. <laughs> cool. Well, we are coming uh, close to the end of the time. We're gonna have uh, one more performance from the cast. But before we do, I have one parting question for everybody. All right. So this is a school all about rock, all about music. 
you have one, you're on a desert island, you can listen to one song for the rest of your life. What is it? Amadi, we'll start on your side and we'll, we'll, we'll work our way down. <laughs> You've been last every time, now you're first. Uh, uh, okay, uh, 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 okay. I think I'm gonna go with um, um, Michael Jackson. Um, uh, uh, I don't know, all of his songs, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Playlist. <laughs> Um, mm, not to be a copier, but I love Michael Jackson, so his whole play mil- it's a good his choice. whole playlist. <laughs> uh, does this have to be a rock song or no? W- one okay. song. If there was one song I could pick, it would be um, "Should Have Been Us" by Tori Kelly. Oh She's my favorite artist. So, <laughs> can you come back to me because I got yeah. this is a hard question. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's got to be uh, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Did I steal yours? No. Crowd favorite, yeah. That was a nice, <laughs> nice, nice Thanks, answer. <laughs> um, I don't know if it, any of you know this band, but it's called Snarky Puppy. and I. Uh, <laughs> no, but I will Google it afterwards. Google, it. Um, uh, Google the song What About Me because I absolutely love that song. Snarky by Puppy. Snarky Puppy, all right. Um, a Dreaming with a Broken Heart or Gravity by John Mayer or any song from John Mayer's Continuum album. Nice choice. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen or Roberta yeah. Flack, Killing Me Softly. Cause mm. Okay. Uh, pro- he gave me the Queen idea. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to do Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, guys, this was so much fun talking to you. As everybody said, you are so poised and fun and uh, intelligent, obviously super talented musicians. Um, so thank you all so much for being here. I think we're going to close it out uh, with one song from you, Connor. And then um, if we can just get a round of applause to thank, every- thank them for being here. You thought they were impressive. <laughs> Prepare to be slightly disappointed. Feast your eyes, your ears, and your butts. I'll be strumming my axe in a basement dive with my totally kick-ass band. When an army of an armed men will arrive with pens and contracts in hand. And they'll whisk me away in a big black car and the record execs girls from PR. They'll know from the start what a major league star I will be. Just wait and see. When I climb to the top of Mount Rock and I'm there staring down from the heights with a crowd at my feet and a seven inch bolt in my lizard skin spandex tights. I'll dive off the edge straight into a crowd that's screaming my name out loud. And the top of Mount Rock. I'll be blowing out amps, playing stadium shows on my sold out galactic tour. And I'll blister the ears of the first thousand rows and leave while they beg for more. Then I'll pop the champagne and the party will rave. No brown M&Ms in my green room backstage. Bigger than Hendrix and Clapton and Paige and the rest. The all-time band. When I climb to the top of Mount Rock And I'm perched at the uppermost peak With a legion of groupies all duking it out For my chiseled rock god physique Ha! I'll scatter hit singles all over the land With my 12 Grammys in hand Watch the band boys all fly Round the top of Mount Rock The doubters and the haters and the hipsters, let them laugh. Soon they'll all be begging for my roadies autograph. I know my time is coming. Well, hopefully it's coming. I'm pretty sure it's coming any day. Once I find a way. Then the dreams that I had since the day I turned 10 will be finally coming true. And no one will call me a loser again Or tell me what I can't do So I'll hold my head high and keep strumming those strings And grab any chance that my destiny brings I'll rise and I'll rise and I'll rise On the wings of my song Up where I belong And I'll climb to the top of Mount Rock And be part of that heavenly scene With Odin and Zeus on the base of the tree
drums and four playing tambourine. Then Elvis and Janice and Kerr will appear, and Jesus will toss me a beer. And we'll jam around the clock at the top of Mount Rock. <laughs> Awesome. Can we get a round of applause for them, everybody? Awesome. Thank you, guys.